Hi Capricorn Moons, thank you so much for being here. I am Divine Femme Care at 144. Very happy, grateful, and blessed to bring you this reading. This reading is designed for those who have their moon sign in the zodiac sign of Capricorn, unlimited to anyone who should find this message or should this message find you. For your reading, I will be doing a six card spread <laughs> and then clarifying those six cards. I've already pre-shuffled both decks. I'm going to shuffle the first deck just a few more times, split the deck, and then we will begin your reading. I'm just hearing with your energy of Saturn, Saturn being the ruler of Capricorn, you are a great judgment bringer to situations that may attempt to do you harm or do you wrong. Your first card. We have is the Eight of Swords. And this is the energy of being stuck in a situation i don't feel that this is you i do feel that this is someone that you may have been connecting to a energy is having to do with prosperity and so um seeing this toe going towards the water here i just feel that there's uh energy of fear here in this energy here this is Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius energy here. And I'm getting a judgment energy connected to this with this being representative of an eight of a different tarot deck that is coming to mind that has a serpent in the shape of an eight here. So that could also be dealing with reptilian energy as well. Let's see what we have for your second card. We have the Wheel of Fortune. And with this being the center card, I do feel that this is um, a lot of energy that is dealing with uh, things turning in your favor. I do feel that this is your energy being the luck buck. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the title. But you have a very abundant energy here. That goes back to um, past lifetimes. Very interesting that the clarifying deck is Egyptian. And we have the Sphinx here sitting on top of this wheel. Representative with your 10th house energy of Capricorn here. And then we have all of the um, surrounding energies. Being connected to the energies that are also a part of the world card as well. This breaking down to an overall one, speaking to a new beginning, where I do feel that, um, you know, if there was an energy of you being stuck or being connected to someone in the state of swords, it's, there's a shift so that this energy is moved away from completely and entirely. But I do feel that this is uh, your energy here as this wheel of fortune and just speaking to the amount of abundance and blessing that you bring and having to have great discernment about your surroundings and who you bring this beautiful energy to. You representing that 10 there. Your third time. Yep. It's time to go. Time to go. We have more 10 energy where I'm getting this being connected to you. So you moving away from a situation, you being this energy here, realizing how it's been affecting you and um, your abundance, taking what it is that you have built on and moving along somewhere else where it's going to be respected and appreciated and cared for and also receiving help as well. I feel that this is a heavy burden here and that is what the Ten of Wands is speaking to is having a lot on your plate. 
And there's also a single individual that's in here too. So I do feel that you're moving forward, manifesting what it is that you want versus what you don't want. That 10 is your energy, but then also too, it's about endings and new beginnings. So we have 11 energy that's here. And I'm just getting that being connected to divine union and partnership. Let's scoot these over so we can make some room for the clarifiers. This is fire energy, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries, and a fucus. Your fourth card. We have these six of cups. So what I'm gonna do, cause what I'm feeling here is the need to do this here. I feel that this is a story that's playing out how you have been surrounded with that eight of swords energy that may have been projected onto you. And you realizing just how special and um, significant it is that you are and you're not meant to be near energies around this or having to feel like you may be um, stuck as well. You are a go-getter. You are a goat. You are the greatest of all time. Working and, um, you know, producing is what it is that you do. Um, but on a sweeter note, I do feel with the polarity energy of cancer that you do have, that being somewhat important here, and reciprocity in matters of the home, building on stable and sturdy foundations. This was not stable. This is stuck energy, and you know for a fact that that is not you. So you, again, being in your energy here with this Wheel of Fortune, manifesting and creating as you wonderfully do, you're shifting forward and taking what it is that was a burden connected to that Eight of Swords and moving into reciprocity and greater friendships that are more loving and more happy and more joyful and more blessed. I feel that um, when I say that, it speaks to the, uh, the abundance that's coming through for you. The sun went down quick. Um, this is six energy. So I'm just getting this being connected to um, a very loving energy and seeing the masculine energy give a cup here to the feminine energy. And this being about what you're manifesting into a new beginning here from these two tens here. This is also judgment energy here. So reaping what you've been sowing, realizing that what you're putting in, connecting to that eight of swords, receiving very little back. So this being about, um, you know, the gift and a part of your reaped harvest that's coming through. I'm also seeing another 10 here. So this just being about what is designed for you and what's destined for you and cannot be taken from you. This is love. Coming from that cups energy. I'm gonna grab the light here. Um, but moving, one, just manifesting and wanting greater for yourself and it being right here in this equal exchange here of that six of cups. Let me grab a light. And I'm hearing it's showtime. <laughs> oh, so this may be about a return of a favor that wasn't so very nice. And you uh, shifting yourself out gracefully and making things happen for yourself where it's more loving and reciprocal. Let's see what we have for your fifth card. Queen of Pentacles, getting back to you and what what it is that you know. And I feel also too, you may have made an investment here. You're putting this to the past here. Um, even though this is coming in after the Six of Cups, this would also be coming underneath that Wheel of Fortune where I feel it's defining you here that's putting something to the past. It may have been an offer um, connected to the Seda Sword, but the price that came with that Pentacle you're not interested because it um, there was no movement and you're all about progression and movement. Let's scoot these over and see if we can get rid of that. That's shiny. We'll just move them up a little bit. Maybe we'll put the we'll put the clarifiers on the bottom. That's what we'll do. Improvise. 
Um, but this Queen of Pentacles is a very nurturing and loving energy who has a lot of great wealth, who has been very structured, that coming here from that Ten of Wands, you knowing how to take care of your business and that being a part of the Capricorn energy. But I feel that this Cancerian energy I was just speaking about and that polarity energy being important to you, being in this cup energy with that being Cancer energy there too as well and seeing that Ten there representing you. This energy of six is also the energy of Virgo. So I do feel with this masculine energy, um, it could be about a Virgo energy that you're in a reciprocation with, or you just manifesting great healing um, masculinity around you as a feminine energy. Possibly being feminine and dealing with a masculine who is more in a feminine energy there and that being a part of that stagnancy there too. And so with the Queen of Pentacles as being a part of Empress Energy, I'm just getting you, you know, returning an offer that had some toxicity connected to it. You now, you know, manifesting what it is to receive and not have any expectancy or anyone feeling like they would keep you in a situation of a Three of Swords or a Five of Swords. Like you had to do something in order to receive. The price that came with it, again, was just not worth it. You have your very own abundant energy here. And we also have the bunny here. And that being an abundant energy there too as well. But super great at um, being a, a wonderful nurturer. This being both Capricorn and Cancerian energy here. You being in a whole state. And happy to share what it is that you have. You have great discernment. And then just being surrounded by beauty because you're beauty. Let's see what your sixth card is. Two of Cups. So you're leaving behind a Six of Cup energy um, where I do feel with that coming underneath that Eight of Swords. We'll just go ahead and move these back. Um, but I do feel it's about reciprocity and you coming, you know, being on a journey of soulmates, returning, <laughs> returning that pinnacle that's just coming through very strongly and saying, you know, a very kind, no, thank you. Thank you, but no, thank you. And uh, manifesting what it is that you know to be true from within yourself, which is this two of cup partnership. So taking again, what it is that you've built and what you gain. And now being in this beautiful exchange here, I do feel too, with the way that this was and wanting to come out across, that um, this being about the childlike energy from within and meeting up with this individual, manifesting uh, a beautiful Virgo male energy here who is loving and giving and surrounding yourself with this. And so with this coming underneath that Eight of Swords, it's just being about you know a soulmate and a karmic completion. And with that completion, we now have that wheel spinning there because you're very abundant and it's meant for you to have a continual flow of abundance coming in. So anything that's trying to prevent that, um, I think that's a part of your purpose is to you know, realize the strength that you have to no longer stay in situations and say no and kindly say no and then manifest what it is that you know you want to see for yourself that is rightfully yours. You have every right to it. And I do feel, too, that, you know, this was a part of a contract that was not seen through because of an Eight of Swords energy here. So there was to be this as a contract where you were to be given to without anything, you know, without having to do anything and that being a part of that 10 being there, too. And so I feel that, you know, again, the Five of Swords energy doing what it takes to win at all costs, trying to be overpowering, over controlling, unfair, unruly. Um, it's complete, it's a, a tainted energy. And then three of swords is deception, cheating, backstabbing, lying. Not willing to take a chance when it came to love because they don't know love for themselves. They feel bound. And that, you know, being a part of what it is that they were experiencing coming into this energy in the first place. 
So now we have this beautiful Two of Cups energy. Beautiful love story that's here. I do feel with the um, Caduceus and the healing energy connected to that line with the wings. Twin flame energy is coming through. Ancestry energy is coming through and two healers that are coming together. And this being a soulmate connection, but it's more of an intimate and reciprocal um, exchange here because we do have the masculine energy just giving to the female the, the female um and i feel you know it's rightfully deserved here too because as a feminine energy it's a lot in itself just to be feminine and um not really get the credit for what it is that we do every day as feminines and how we make the world spin and go around and so i feel that you know this is about again what you're manifesting into your world saying goodbye to what has not served you because of the price that came with it and changing up the game by not manifesting just a six of cups, but something that is more significant, that is more stable, that is more sound and that is more structured and that meets the criteria of what it is that you're looking for because you know what you have from within yourself and you want that to be returned back to you. And that's what we have here. A highly loving connection here that is um, emotional fulfillment here too and that just speaking to the two energy and the what's the word I'm looking for the sanctity of this where there is no outside energy that can influence what is here where with that six energy, it's more widespread. And I'm also getting lover's energy where that could be about a choice, not choosing love. And also having the influence, like having other cups here too. Like this is, you know, someone who may be like, oh yeah, you know, I got all these cups here. And then having the intention of, you know, another person popping up and having that cup ready for them. So possibly, you know, someone who had more than one person and that just not being your cup of tea. Let's get to your clarifiers. I'm going to move this over here. We will clarify the Eight of Swords. Okay, um, so for some of you, I'm getting I'm getting a couple of things. Um, the first thing that came through was that this Eight of Swords, this stuck energy is because someone is already in a union here with someone else, possibly a marriage, being married already, and they're bored. Um, these fours are about stability, but I'm not getting that um, being connected to that. I feel it's about instability and the truth being right here with this eight of swords coming out in the first place. These fours come together to create that eight. So this being the breakdown of what's really taking place with that eight of swords and not having much to do with um, stability. I feel it's about to the polarity energy of you and the shadow work dealing with this particular soulmate on your journey here completing that cycle and now moving that wheel and um, manifesting this beautiful partnership in where you're being given to and you're also, you know, enjoying giving. You enjoy giving. I feel that in the past you enjoyed giving, but then it got to the point where you realized you were the only one giving and that wasn't fun. Thank you, but no thank you. Four of Cups is also about not taking the opportunity that's been given to one and, um, you know, it being a blessed situation when it came to you um, with the divinity that's coming through connected to you and being a divine counterpart. And that's the other thing I was getting here, too, is the twin flame energy with that being a card of twin flames. Taking for granted that opportunity. So having that spiritual connection and the opportunity of a twin flame partnership, but already in the um, 3D, having union and having marriage, but being bored with it. 
So those kind of intermingle. So being bored in a marriage, but then also taking for granted a twin flame connection there. And it's all coming together. Um, with that eight, that eight of swords being connected to that on the more spiritual plane with the twin flame and the opportunity missed, the eights meaning prosperity. The eights also connecting to Scorpio energy. And on that lower plane, having to do with lies and deception, uh, sex, probably, you know, being a sex addict or having issues when it comes to sex. And that being the result of why the actions have taken place with the five of swords and the three of swords and that eight of swords. And then on that other note with the um, twin flame connection and that eight from Scorpio energy, it being more of an occult energy that is um, more of a tantric energy that is highly significant and very rare and missing out on that opportunity due to lower level base chakras not being healed and continuing to make more 3D decisions. Staying stagnant in that eight of swords clarify the wheel of fortune it's great that you have this for your last card because that definitely speaks to you taking the steps to make change in your life for the greater and the power from within you bringing in this beautiful two of cups um, i do feel that that stuck energy also wanted you to be stuck and believing that because this is a twin flame connection that you wouldn't find anything other than that um, and it turns out to be not I think you have definitely found something not only greater, but it's um, being more impactful here too because it's reciprocal. And when that love comes together in that way, it really creates a, a great change amongst the world. And that energy can be felt by everyone. Let's clarify the Wheel of Fortune. And clarify the Wheel of Fortune. I've got my fishy in here. She's just sitting here staring. She's so happy. She's swimming around and enjoying herself. I love that too. This great energy that your uh, reading is bringing here. All right, so with the hangman, I'm just getting this, with this particular card, I am getting this as being, you know, um, having high intuitiveness and being a very great one that's destined here in this lifetime, but also being seen as someone who is um, a sacrifice. And I feel that, you know, with the actions that you're taking for yourself, you're omitting any kind of um, perspective when that comes to you here. You're not that. You're an empress. And that energy is here in that 12 energy here with that two and that one coming together to create a three. The two and the one also creates a one to speak to the champion from within you here. And how it is that you are divinely um, ordained and connected and destined for greatness. This is a card of Pisces. The sun being the happiest card, one of the happiest cards, I should say, in the deck. This is a card of 19. This is also great illumination and balance. This could be... Um, a father energy here too that's very balanced as the masculine energy is connected to leo and this uh, sun energy sun being the ruler of leo is what i'm getting here but this being a rebirth i feel that this is about you surrendering to the universe here for sure allowing the sunlight energy to come through and heal that sun being connected to a father so that may resonate for some of you but being strengthened and renewed, rejuvenated by the sun. Finding balance, surrendering, and just increasing in your power. This is also a one energy with that one and that nine coming together to create a ten, breaking down to an overall one. Champion. Champion spirit here. Royalty is also what I'm getting as well. And there's the world card. So with those two tens that were coming through as judgment, we now have the ordinance here of karmic completions. You moving the wheel, turning things in your favor, being this abundant energy anyway as this wheel of fortune here and realizing your worth and your value and that you don't have to stay in situations that are harmful, but then also are disrespectful when it comes to your money, your prosperity, 
You don't want any ties of toxicity connected to that. So you're putting this to an end. I did mention the energies of this um, surrounding four corners in the Wheel of Fortune also being in the World card. So very beautiful that we have that World card being clarified here, um, being a clarifier of the Wheel of Fortune here. That's just speaking again to the karmic cycles that are successfully closed here. Dealing with Scorpio energy, so it may be possible that the Scorpio energy was the last of what it is that you needed to successfully complete in order to move greater into the massive amount of abundance here that is coming in for you. You moving along accordingly here. And this is also another three. Empress energy. Eight of Wands, Arrows of Love. This is Fire Energy. And this being about communication. I'm not getting this being connected to this Ten of Wands here. Because I'm getting this as more of burdens where, you know, with that breakdown and the two coming together with this eight to create that 10 could be about the action and deciding to take action for oneself. So that could be possible, but I'm not getting this. I'm getting this as just being a soul energy here of love that is um, being manifested in what it is that you're moving into and moving towards. Receiving this love and also giving this love. This being the exchange here in the spiritual sense here. And now I'm getting this as being, um, you know, what's being brought down into the physical here. Yay. As above, so is below. Infinity symbol here. Prosperity. So this eight of swords connected to toxicity. Notice we don't have that infinity symbol energy here, but we do have it here where I'm getting that being connected to the prosperity energy, that flip side energy of what can come through when you decide to do what's best for you. And it also being about who it is that you're connecting with as well. Knowing your value and your worth, you're now connecting with someone who is just as much of that value and that worth, knowing that from within themselves and you bringing that together. And again, when you bring that together, it's like fireworks. We have these strength cards. So being very strong and taming the beast to do what it is. I'm getting play fights. This being a part of the arrows of love and the love expression that's going back and forth. But I'm getting this, you know, being about you being very strong. Being seen as a strong energy here too. And who it is that you may be connecting with now in this two of cups here. Having, you know, this energy of allowing themselves to you know, be tamed by you, wanting you to. They love it and they enjoy it and they want more of it. I'm getting justice energy connected to this as well. 11th house energy of Aquarius is coming through. Two healers and um, humanitarians fulfilling their purpose here on this earth here. And I was getting that healing energy connected to the Caduceus here with the lion head being here and we have that here. So in that completion of karmic cycles, because the uh, Leo energy is also a part of those four corners there too, connected to Aquarius. So again, um, this is all coming down to the, the completions of those cycles and the transmutation of what you've experienced from different zodiacs or a combination of zodiacs in one person. And now this being a true, significant, fun blessing for you with a lot of love that's coming in. Seeing your ships come in. It's a card of manifestation. And I do believe we will leave this card on top. Let's clarify the Ten of Wands. Clarify the Ten of Wands.
Eight of Pentacles, hard work, hard work pays off. And I am seeing this as uh, four of Pentacles, two very responsible people who are stable and have taken care of their wealth very successfully here, man and woman. And we have that here with the judgment. We have these two tens coming together, more of your energy here. Your energy is all over the place in this reading here, which is beautiful. Um, but man and wife, I'm getting here again. I channel cake toppers for your reading. So this is perfect. <laughs> it's perfect because we have this here and then we have the two of cups as your last card for your reading. Hard work coming together. High five energy. I'm seeing that here. This being past life energy that's now coming into fruition after some very diligent hard work doing the self work to build up oneself financially, but then also um, spiritually. I'm really loving oneself, gaining self-love. Card of 20 breaks down to a two, two connecting to that two of cups here. The judgment call being you reaping the harvest of your hard work, seeing your hard work pay off in this connection here. The Knight of Wands, I'm just getting this being about the action that's taking place on the part of more of that masculine energy here. And this just being about this possibly being a younger energy, but this could also be, oh, this could also be the creation, the procreation of what's coming together with this Two of Cups. So some of you may be actually having and reproducing a baby here from this beautiful love union, which is a part of the contract here too, seeing that contract there. And this being a fire sign child loving one another, putting in the hard work and the effort coming together, um, you know, this being a, a reward and a blessing, part of the harvest, and the result being a beautiful fire sign child here. Clarify these six of cups. Did that flip? Yep. And I'm just getting this as being more lust-based energy here. With this being an Ace of Wands, not doing reversal, but I do feel with it coming out that way, just meaning it's a no. It just, um, it being a part of that third party and added to that, you know, if this is falling underneath that, Five of Wands here. So that being more of an energy that is toxic connected to this, but I'm getting more of a lustful energy and also in and out energy. And the reason why is because there was someone else here. We'll do this because this is a pretty energy. I do feel it's about taking that for granted here and being in this energy and not being responsible with the D. Clarify the Queen of Pentacles. And I'm just hearing I love you. Someone really loves you and you really love them. So maybe we'll go ahead and put this on top here. Oh, where to go? This eight and this three, they do come together to create the 11 energy. Speaking to divine union, but also the energy of what was coming through connected to these two cards here, broken down, and then also the judgment energy um, from what was here as a part of this uh, beautiful energy there of a contract coming together. And the blessings coming in. Arrows of love. Clarify the Queen of Pentacles. Oh. I'm not getting this as being your energy here. Let's clarify the Queen of Pentacles. I'm getting that as being the succubus latching energy of someone who's already in a connection and that being connected up here. Let's clarify the Queen of Pentacles.
All right, so I mean, this is pretty much, ex it's self-explanatory here. Speaking to the um, polarity energy of that cancer energy from within you here is that queen of chalices here. And you being the overall empress here, who's completely major. You're also very balanced. I'm seeing, you know, you having your own back first. Giving, again, saying, you know, a kind cheers. And I didn't mean to do that on purpose. <laughs> Some of you may be doing that in a very graceful way. Um, but, you know, saying goodbye to what no longer serves you that was in your past here. That has helped you to come into this Queen of Chalices here. Coming from this Queen of Pentacles as your Capricorn energy. And finding the, the stabilization and the balance from the heartache and pain and the burden that was dealing with this particular energy here. And so I didn't want to speak on this, but I do feel that this is about an immature water sign energy here that, um, you know, is using magician energy to be manipulative and to continue to try to stay in your world and your atmosphere and keep you stuck because they're stuck. You saying goodbye you know, very firmly here. You're very strong in your decision here and also very firm in your decision to move forward as this beautiful Empress energy, being very much in your power, highly magnetic, being able to be the magician and utilize all the elements that you need at any time to bring in whatever it is that you want and desire. This wheel of fortune energy, you being very abundant. I'm just being, uh, getting that being connected to the sun energy that's surrounding you here. And I did pick that up here in this uh, queen of pentacles here. All around the throne there. You glistening and glowing, but being a very warm, nurturing, loving soul who's highly intuitive. Very beautiful. This is uh, one of the more beautiful queens out of all the Empress energy, all four queens making the Empress here. But you being seen as beautiful here too. Um, you're very attentive to how it is that you look, what it is that you wear, how you carry yourself, a lover of accessories and jewelry. And you continue to be, you know, responsible with your finances, but accommodating yourself and treating yourself in the best way. Taking good care of your feet. Your feet may be tired at times. You do a lot of great work as a Empress. And this is also the energy of being ready to bear a baby. But also a great healer here too, being in front of that sun energy. That three energy being connected to what I was pulling here from this energy and then also the world card. You being seen and appreciated for this as well too. Great mother energy to an emperor. But um, again, one who is highly creative and can, um, you know, make something out of nothing. Strong Venus energy. So um, comforts are very important. Beauty and surroundings that are beautiful are very important. Peace, harmony. You've worked very hard to get to this Empress energy here. Going through certain levels here and, you know, mastering each of the queen energies to reach this here. Clarify this beautiful ass two of cups. <laughs> Clarify the two of cups. All right, so what I'm getting is that being there, I feel that this is a part of this magician energy here. 
And the reason why you have leveled up and gained greater intuitiveness is because you've had practice with a magician energy who likes to play games, who doesn't like to um, complete things and close things successfully and leave things in a hot mess and still have things open and still go and still ongoing. And because of that, um, you know, what it is that they may try to do will not be successful just due to the actions and the way that they handle stuff. So I am seeing this emperor here, but I'm not getting this being a part of the emperor energy that I was feeling connected to this two of cups. And I feel that that is possibly why here too, we have this queen of chalices. We have strong counterpart energy that's here and how it is that you're being seen as this empress manifesting a new emperor here because of what you've dealt with, moving away from what no longer serves you. Being with this emperor here, um, it was a five of swords energy, playing games and a five of cups energy. So they're being regret, doing what it takes to win at all costs. We have that five of swords and that eight of swords as well. And that five energy resonates with the five energy where I do feel that with that heightening energy and you being an empress, there's also the level of the high priestess being established here too. And I feel that that's a part of this queen of chalices here too. And that being counterpart to the here font where I do feel that that is, you know, who it is that you're more moving towards here on a more elevated plane. And that being a part of, you know, having twin flame energy, but you can move on to a greater soulmate here. And I feel that that greater soulmate is a here font energy to your high priestess. So this emperor that you left behind, Six of Swords meaning this here. Um, who is this magician and also this person who is stuck here? Doing what it takes to win at all costs. Not being, um, you know, if you're going to attempt to do things like this, at least be good at it is what I'm hearing. This being a 10 of ending here. This being a four energy where I'm just getting that being connected to the magician. Woo woo ways. And this four being connected to these fours right here. The six energy also being connected to that six of cups right here. So someone's completely busted and their spots blown wide open. We'll go ahead and leave that over here. I feel that that's also, you know, the way that they get attention here too, because I'm talking way too much about this and not about this beautiful king of cups who has shown themselves here very strongly connected to this two of cups, to your queen of cups. Or I should say chalices because that's what we have here for these cards. To being an empress who is creating and manifesting more love into your life and moving away from that energy of an emperor who has um, more of that 3D energy connected to them and surrounded with swords, with trickery, foolery, tomfoolery, and um, cheating and deception. A lot of toxicity connected to that. So with that, um, being at the first part of this reading and your energy, this just speaking to why all of this is shifting and the universe is seeing you through because you realizing your worth and value, moving more into what it is that you want and it just being about love and great compassion, great sexual intimacy that is beyond, you know, what you were expecting and um, realizing that, you know, you deserve the best and you're going to have the best. And so you're manifesting this as this empress bringing in um, new love for yourself here that is, again, on more of a loving plane here. Reciprocal energies here. And I am seeing this cup here also being about you giving the love to yourself, learning about self-love and that being important. This king of cup here. I'm getting there, you know, a very strong magician here too, but they're all about integrity. And that's what that stands for here. And the intuitive connection, I feel that that's about the knowing that you both share, not having to speak many words and that being a part of the high priestess energy, not having to speak many words, just going ahead and feeling and that being a part of the spirituality and those arrows of love there, being able to share this telepathically and communicate in this beautiful way. But most definitely I'm getting that you are, you know, successfully manifesting this two of cups of partnership 
where it's designed for you both to come together and to create and be great leaders in the world in whatever it is that you do, which I do feel is um, on a great magnitude. Um, yeah. Yeah. And this king is a part of emperor energy. But again, I'm just feeling this being about a new emperor energy that's taking place here. And the importance of you really feeling from within and knowing the truth for yourself rather than outside influences and what wants to be, um, you know, projected upon you to have you in some kind of state of confusion or feeling as if, you know, you're just going to continue to manifest the same thing you're not. And the evidence is right here. We have the sword of truth. Building on a foundation of solidity and truth. You have sexual healing here too as well. <laughs> Can't get away from it. So this has been coming through as two energies on a more elevated state here, coming away from three of swords who have realized their worth and their value, moving forward on foundation of truth, finding one another from within by completing the wholeness from within self, finding great stability, transmuting the energy of those two fours here, and even that four from that emperor there, and coming together and creating beautiful magic and a very tantric sexual connection here that's also very loving and healing. And this being a part of that feeling, you know, growing into this mastery of these king and queens of chalices here and relying on oneself rather than outside energies who have not done the work. This being the truth. I'm going to leave this just like this. Matter of fact, we'll just put it right here. There's great love here. And you feel it, you're experiencing it already, and the possibilities are endless. I feel that this is, you know, some great reward that you are reaping, seeing the uh, fruits of your labor for you and this King of Chalices here. And it's just too bad that there's adversity when it comes to this particular kind of love, because it is a true blessing that is all about um, contentment and harmony. But I feel that that's a part of the utilization of the tools that you both have to be able to continue to do the work that you do, be in the love that you have. And now that you are both aware of this beautiful connection that you share, to be strong in it and to continue forward, moving in this and loving one another while continuing to love yourselves. So Capricorn Moons, this was your beautiful reading. I hope that these messages were helpful, enlightening, enriching, and empowering for you. You are abundant AF here. Wheel of Fortune, you represent that. I thank you all so much for your continued love and support. Welcome to all new subscribers. And until we meet again, I wish you all the very best. Take great care. I love you. Peace. Hi, Capricorn Moon. So I wanted to get greater clarity on this King of Chalices. And these are the cards that came out. And they came out in this exact order here. I immediately turned on my recorder here to show this and still be in this energy here. I just finished your reading. And it, so it was. I was just guided to do more cards and clarify this King of Chalices here. And this is exactly what came out. And I think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful message to say what is here and, you know, what all has been coming through in your reading to confirm this even further for you. Because that magician energy, wanting to keep you in that dumbass energy of that eight of swords because they're stuck in something that they don't have the balls to stand up for themselves and get out of. And wanting to keep you in that energy where it's been affecting you 
and you being a very abundant energy and it just not being, you know, what's designed in the plan here when it comes to your destiny and your fate. So I am getting, you know, that strong counterpart energy being here. The Knave of Swords, that Page of Swords, I feel that that's about the greater interest and the heightened spirituality of this divine union and connection here and it being very blessed and abundant. With this Ten of Wands here, I do feel it speaks to the feminine energy having more burdens to bear. And that's speaking to the amount of strength that is from within you, where I was getting that being a lot of you here as this Queen of Chalices and Queen of Pentacles and also the Empress energy here. But this Hierophant energy, being in this King of Chalices, very loving and supportive energy, but highly intuitive as well, wanting to support you in the best way that they know how and being a provider for you here. Wanting to do that, wanting to be that, you manifesting that, someone wanting to reciprocate because you want to give and you want someone to give to you. And that's what that Two of Cups represents there too as well. And you both could be spying on each other <laughs> with the intuitiveness that you have um, and just the interest that you have with one another, very fascinated by one another. Um, I feel that the king here is more fascinated by the energy of you, for those of you resonating as the queen of chalices, queen of pentacles, empress, and high priestess here, because of the way that you're able to manifest, despite everything that it is that's been thrown at you with the amount of that burden energy that we have. We have the ten of wands twice here. And again, more ten energy here. So I feel that, um, you know, this is about the transmutation you turning ashes into gold. And like Ariana Grande said, you want it, you got it. You learning and being more powerful in your moon energy here too and knowing that greater mindset and being more aspiring when it comes to what it is that you're you know, thinking about and actually putting out into the universe is more of what you do want versus what you don't want. And you're doing a great job at it. The love is here, the beautiful connection, the Ten of Pentacles. I'm even getting Ten of Cups energy here too. Having everything you need right here in this Two of Cup here because it, again, coming together in this beautiful connection, it just, it unlocks, it's like a key that just unlocks great treasure of abundance and it being a part of destiny. So this was the um, <laughs> clarification of that King of Chalices. I wanted to share this with you. I was spiritually guided to look a little further. Here we are. This is what we have. Beautiful counterpart energy that did come through and was channeled. Now we have it here in the cards. Thank you, Capricorn Moons. I love you. Peace.